Hello and welcome back to Schooling Around. I'm Alexis Ware. We're missing Rachel Baker this week and can't wait for her to rejoin us again for Schooling Around next week. But we do have a segment with her and Brain Balance coming on later in the show. I know you all already have noticed, but it's officially fall and we're starting to see colder days back to back. And you know what that means. Yes, it's football season and pumpkin spice drinks are back, but it's homecoming time. Because homecoming is around the corner, we're going to be showing you all a few places around town for your homecoming essentials every week leading up to homecoming. This week we have Eveline's fashion for your tailoring needs. Take a look. So what kind of services do you guys offer here? Actually, my wife does everything. Uh, like some people come in with a photo and say, I want a wedding dress. Mm -hmm. And she'll make that from scratch. Wow. Or other people will bring a dress from their past, like their mother's dress, and she'll duplicate it. Oh, that's really nice. So whatever they want, uh, she's able to do it, even make patterns. And do you guys typically prefer for people to bring in their own fabric or is it better if you guys go out and find the fabric yourselves? It depends on sometimes the color is hard to find and maybe they've already got the color. They went and found some fabric and said, this is the color I want. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. But if they don't know really what they want and they just have a photo, sometimes it's better for us to find the fabric. Great. Okay. And tell me about this dress. Why don't you tell me about this dress? Did you make this dress? Yeah. I'm Was just, it? I'm working on it. It's not done yet. Great. Have, yeah. Is there any special reason why you're making it? Is it for a client? Yeah, I have a wedding show. Wow. Friday, yeah, mm -hmm. I want to go. Cool. So why don't you tell me about the wedding show? What is it? Like, what is The bridal show is at the boss place in Grand Rapids. Oh cool, you're traveling. And, yes, we, we each have our own booth. We'll have a booth along with other people. And our objective is to get more clients. Right. So she'll probably have this one there and maybe one another one. Mm -hmm. We'll have a slideshow. We're going to show the people. So the main aim, of course, is to get more clients. Right. And how did you make this dress? Like, tell me the step-by-step, -step, um, I guess, process to making a dress like this. Okay. Like, uh, this is, uh, the, they call this fabric uh, satin. Okay. Stretch, yeah. I buy the fabric, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, I buy the lace. Now, I, I don't know how you want to know that, but I could, first of all, the, the lace, the fabric inside, the, how you call that, the... Is it... Satin. Oh, the satin. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Inside you have a satin, mm -hmm. and here on the top you have this uh, pretty lace. Oh. Did you do that from a picture or just from your imagination? No, from my imagination. Great. Is mm -hmm. this how you normally do it? Do you just do it from your imagination, or do you see something and then you're like, I want to, I want to make that come alive? I can do like that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can do from something else. Sometimes inspiration comes from right. what I see, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Awesome. And how long does it typically take you to make a wedding dress or any kind of dress? For this one, just one week. Just one week? Mm -hmm. Cool. So if some, like a teenager were to come in a week before homecoming and say, I've been looking everywhere, I can't find the dress that I want, can you make this for me? You can make it in like you yes, know, a week or but two? It depends which what I have to do. Right. Yes. Of if, course. Yes. If yeah. I have, uh, because it depends which my schedule. If I have a lot of work, mm -hmm. maybe no. Right. Yes. But if I don't have a lot of work, I can do. Cool. Great. Mm -hmm. And is it anything else that either either one of you guys want to add about your business or about the work that you do? Well, we try to please every customer. Uh, some people they want something unusual. Mm-hmm. Well, my wife looks at it and says, yeah, I can do that for you. And uh, if you look at a, a Google, Google our business, you see uh, quite a few that have responded as to the kind of treatment they've got right. and how satisfied they are with my wife's results. Okay. Well, thank you guys for talking to me and obviously giving the teenagers of Oxford High School some options to come for alterations as well as to like make their dream dress come true. Mm -hmm. 
Eveline's Fashion is just one of the many businesses around Oxford you can go to to prepare for homecoming. Tune in next week for yet another homecoming essential. In other news, the students of Clear Lake Elementary School has a really cool running green team club. I took a trip there to speak with green team leader Ms. Corrigan and see what students have learned so far. Here's Ms. Corrigan. All right, Ms. Danielle, can you explain to me why green team was started? Um, we started um, just to kind of get the kids involved in environmental issues, local issues, and it started out more like global, but then we kind of brought it back in more to like local stuff like Oxford, Oakland County, Michigan, because there's a lot of, with the yeah. Great Lakes, there's a lot of stuff that we can, we can talk about. Okay. And how long has Green Team been running? This will be our 12th year this year. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. that's a long time. Yeah. Okay, and what are some of the, I guess, the core fundamentals of Green Team? Um, just what we teach the kids every um pretty much every meeting that, you know, every little kid, every kid can make a small difference, and each small difference can make a big impact. And that's like our main, that I try and instill on the kids every every day, so. And you mentioned little kid. There were a lot of little kids here. What is the age graphic for that? Um, it's, we open it up for kindergarten through fifth grade, and we did have a couple of developmental kindergarten, which is like, not quite younger. preschool, yeah, even younger, so, because they have siblings, so it's like, must let them come. So, exactly, yeah. great. Better teach, yeah, it's better to teach them early. So. Exactly. Okay. And how often do these uh, students meet? Weekly? Monthly? We meet once a month. Okay. That's that's just for an hour. An hour a month. So. Oh, that's good. Great. And I saw a few of the kids rocking these really cool <laughs> green team green shirts. Yes. Where, like, do each member get one, or is it for returning members? Um, everyone gets one. This one is actually from a couple years ago, and then two years ago we had a 10th anniversary one. Mm -hmm. And actually this year I'm making new ones for the kids. Okay. Kind of cute little ones, so. Oh, cool. awesome. And just one quick last question. What is some of, I guess, the activities that you do within that hour every month? We try and break it down. Um, each month I have, um, like, one thing, like today we did an endangered animal. So then one week we'll talk about, like, um, invasive species or, like, things that are impacting the Great Lakes or recycling. Like, November we do a big thing on recycling because it's America Recycles Month. Okay. And we do something big for Earth Day. So we kind of break it up into one big main topic each, each meeting. Oh, awesome. All right, guys, you heard it here first. Recycling is not only good for little kids to learn about, but as adults, you might as well pick it up, too. This is Alexis Ware, OCTV. It's only right that we heard from some of the younger club members. Here's what students enjoy most. Like, I really want to get these big, big pollinators that, like, you need this, like, wood that, yeah, they're really good pollinators. You need it to get through the wood eight inch. Um, pool and what those little teeny tiny little bees do. They're smart so they cover themselves with mud in the forest and they're great pollinators so they they protect themselves and pollinate a lot. Good. And also try getting rid of locusts because that eats a lot of the green um, stuff like, like strawberries, whole plants, and that and without that a lot of animals can't survive by starving. Good job. And what are some of the activities that you guys do in Green Team? Um, well, we draw, we eat snacks, that's all I know. Mean. And you learn about endangered species, yeah, right? Yeah, we help them. And you help them, good job, okay. Well, thank you guys so much for talking to me. High fives for both of you. My favorite thing to do is like go outside of the nature center and make things out of like the things. One time we made um, s'more sticks out of um, a little Caesar's pizza box. Wow, was it good? Yes, it was delicious. <laughs> Um, my favorite thing to do with Green Team is um, um, talk about the animals and stuff. Cool. And what are some of the animals that you guys talk about? Um, well, we talk about endangered um, animals. animals and pick an animal every year to, that's endangered to mm -hmm. talk about. Canine Stray Rescue is Oxford's own local dog rescue. Each year they take in hundreds of dogs and bring them into suitable homes. A certified nonprofit organization, Canine Dog Rescue strives to give pound dogs a new leash on life.
To donate, adopt, or even volunteer, call them at 248-628-0435 or go to their website, dogsaver.org, and click on the K9 Stray Rescue League link. It's awesome that this was the students' first time meeting for the year and they already have such a vast knowledge of animals and the world around them. Another thing that Ms. Corrigan mentioned to me is that every year Oakland County Green Schools recognizes schools for the level of work they do by giving out patches. Clear Lake has currently been the top evergreen school for the last 10 years. Great job, guys. And as I promised, here's Rachel Baker with Brain Balance. All right, and so we're back at Brain Balance with Larry Hockman and Carrie Odrebrina, directors here. And so I'd like to start and ask you guys, what makes you different from other traditional methods of helping students with neurodevelopmental disorders? So Brain Balance is two things. We're a developmental program. So, you know, the brain, as we talked a little bit last time, um, the brain develops from the brain stem up in a very specific manner. And so if development gets off track, it's important for us to um, understand where development is off. You can't miss a milestone because of how the brain develops. If there is a gap in development, um, and, and let's say a milestone is crawling. So if a child didn't crawl or they didn't crawl long enough, the neural pathways that should be there will either be missing or they'll be weak. And it's hard to build upon what's not there. And so understanding that developmental piece is critical. So we're a developmental program, um, but we're also a hemispheric program. So, you know, the brain has two sides, two hemispheres. Um, they specialize in different things. The left hemisphere specializes in more um, fine motor activities, more things academic, linear and logical. Um, it's kind of, it likes a lot of control. Um, the right hemisphere is more of your social emotional hemisphere it's your gross motor control center it's getting the big picture it's going with the flow um, and the way the brain develops um, as it develops it's creating a lot of connectivity between those two hemispheres so they can share information and communicate seamlessly but if something goes wrong developmentally and an imbalance between the maturity of those two hemispheres is affected, now you have uneven, you know, gifts and abilities and, and strengths, right? But not only that, um, it affects the way those two hemispheres have connected. So now you have a disconnectedness that can affect how the student processes information, which can affect how they perceive things, how they take things in and process their sensory things, um, like how well the, their eyes work, the fine motor system of their visual system, and how they're able to accurately take in and pull in information. That's a, that's a critical system. The visual system is the, the largest um, system in the in the brain and it affects the most other systems and so if visually development is not keeping up and it's off it's affecting um, how we can take information in it which is going to affect how we're able to control how the two eyes work together like for reading um, it can affect the auditory system and if those two systems aren't maturing together then you have two systems that um, can't communicate because it's two systems not maturing together is like having two different computer systems from different generations trying to talk to each other. One is slower than the other. They're not able to connect efficiently. So you get a lot of churn, right? And that causes a lot of frustration for these kids. It, it isn't always, you know, about are they smart enough? It's about can they take in and put all of the information that they're receiving visually and auditorily and through their sense of touch and their sense of smell can they put that all together appropriately are they experiencing the world appropriately that allows them to do what they need to do in the classroom and at home right mm -hmm. so we're a developmental program we're a hemispheric program and we're really looking to see where are the areas of immaturity so that we can create a customized program for each child to meet them where they are at and get them to where they need to be to be able to keep up with their peers. 
And how do you recognize these gaps? For example, if a child were to come in and uh, the parent says, you know, he doesn't like to read, um, mm -hmm. he lacks focus, I think this might be ADD, it might be ADHD, mm -hmm. he's very fidgety. Yeah. Help. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. You know, it's very complicated because, you know, sometimes kids come to us and they have a diagnosis. Other times they come and they don't. We don't care about the diagnosis. You know, labels can be really tricky because mm -hmm. um, every child is unique. And, you know, when, when a child gets diagnosed with ADHD or, you know, on the spectrum, it's really a, a behavioral checklist. And, you know, are they having this issue or is, is impulsivity an issue? Is focus an issue? Is, you know, all of these things. And if we check enough boxes, then they get that label, right? But what's going on underneath the symptom right. that caused us to check the box that led to this label? That's what we're looking for in our assessment. You know, how, you know, when we're doing the, the, the visual piece, and, and we're not eye doctors, we're not testing vision per se, we're testing how the fine motor system of the eyes is working so that that child can accurately pull in information the way they're supposed to. So for example with my own son, we like many parents who have a child who's struggling, right? You do everything you know to do. You do speech therapy and physical therapy and occupational therapy because there's never just one thing going on. It's always these multiple challenges a all problems. right exactly and and you can try tutoring and counseling and it you know for us and for a lot of families it just never quite gets you over the hump and it's and then you're you're frustrated saying is there no hope is this as good as it's going to get which is where my son at age 17 was you know mom if if this is life if this is how hard it's always going to be you know do do we want to do this you know and but what's your option and so then you know to to find brain balance and find someone who could do an assessment and tell us exactly what was going on exactly where he was stuck developmentally um, what his hemispheric weakness is and how that was causing these different symptoms that we were seeing and it made so much sense and the light bulb just went on and it's like this is the missing piece it wasn't his eyesight right his eyesight was fine but his the fine motor system and that visual ability to to coordinate his two eyes and accurately take in information was so weak and immature that those two systems couldn't communicate with each other which was causing all of this academic distress and frustration, and frustration. right yep and I'm sorry to, to, just to jump in there because um, for so many and, and we were talking before I don't think, and, and I'm sure it's true for your mm -hmm. son as well, I don't think there's any kid who gets up in the morning and goes to mm -hmm. school right. and says, I'm going to be the class clown today. Mm -hmm. I'm going to avoid things. I'm going to act out. Mm -hmm. Everyone that I've ever met in, right. that, through a long career in education, um, they want to succeed. And when they have those problems, when mm -hmm. it's not coming to them, when they're not processing visually when they're not processing auditorily um, they compensate that's when they become the class clown that's when they avoid that's when they become oppositional um, that's when they get tummy aches and, and don't want to go to school mm -hmm. and so to be able to work with kids in, in ways that are different from the typical school Addressing because yeah, there's an old expression if the only tool you have is a hammer you're going to treat everything as if it's a nail and schools they do some amazing work but there's just a limited number of things that they can do within budgets mm -hmm. that they can do within staffing that they can do within their schedules uh, that they can do with what they know at that given time mm -hmm. And so the fact that we can do so many different things here mm -hmm. in brain balance where it, it addresses those things and, and kids and, and families to finally know that, hey, this isn't my fault, mm -hmm. that I can try hard, but there's a reward mm -hmm. and, and I'm finding ways to process and, and learn the things and, and again to bring that back to a school setting because a big part of what we do is to work with schools and, and to help them understand some of the specific strengths and the deficits that students have that their kids have and so they can finally once and for all um, integrate what they're learning and, and experience that success it's 
it's a validation for the families and it's a validation for these kids that have tried so hard and no I don't have to be the class clown and I don't have to manifest that that tummy ache and and I could succeed and I could widen my dreams and it's 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 a blessing to see that happen yeah and the tummy aches are a real thing you know and the 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 headaches are a real thing for a lot of these kids because um, nutrition can have a big role Absolutely. in development and you know there are foods um, that cause inflammation in our system and you know we're hearing more and more about that now in these you know last several years this is becoming more of a mainstream conversation but you know sugar and and, and gluten and dairy those are inflammatories to the system you know kids leave here and they're just a lot healthier and their their palate has expanded they're willing to eat things that the parents said oh they'll never eat that and four months later they've got a whole different you know array of fruits and vegetables that they're willing to eat that they would never eat before so you know it is it's it's a whole systemic issue when kids are struggling and they need the support and so that's the the approach we really yes. take um, and really looking at other guidelines um, for healthy brain development you know this is a new world you know this digital world we live in this this was not a thing 20 years ago there is an impact that all of this early exposure to you know screens and, and digital gaming and, and those types of things are having on the brain and so it's about educating our parents and our and our community about what are the healthy guidelines for brain development and so we do we do a lot of partnering do community workshops and parent workshops and you know school professional development um, to really talk about what are the elements of healthy brain development how soon have you seen students improve and I know you've talked mm -hmm. about some testimonials oh my gosh. that you have and yes if you could read some of those to us I think that would be great for the yeah. audience to hear because it's remarkable well truly. most of you know we're an after-school program when students are enrolled they're coming three times a week and you know most of our students need between a three and a six month program so um, okay let me read one uh, this is a before brain balance mom says my son was unable to attend school due to his continuous aggressive and out-of-control behavior. He was ba barely able to be in the classroom. He refused to follow directions. I was often afraid of my own little eight-year-old son. So she ended up having to homeschool him, um, which was never the plan, because he couldn't be in a school environment. Yep. After Brain Balance, she wrote me, and this was just a few months ago, we're almost two years out of program. So that talks to the lasting wow. impact, the lasting right? Effect. Yep. And he is very he is a very compliant child. He is about to graduate fifth grade from our local public school, which he has been attending successfully since mid third grade. He no longer has meltdowns at home or at school. Now I get to enjoy his intelligence and sense of humor every day. I can't believe I was ever afraid of him or for him. You know, one of our employees is a, you know, is a paraprofessional. We have other teachers that work with us here and work with the kids. Um, and they'll say, you know, for a paraprofessional, they might work with the same child for four or five years, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, our, our employee said, you know, I've seen more growth in six months than I would often see in four or five years of working with the same student academically. Absolutely. That's remarkable. Because when you build the brain, when you get development where it needs to be, then the academics are going to come, yes. right? And when the brain is working and processing information and they can, you know, they're picking up on things and they can actually um, process a conversation like this in real time. And so social interactions become easier and more appropriate, you know? Life just opens up, and, and that's why I'm here, because I saw that happen for my son, wow. you know? And after 17 years of struggle and giving up on his dreams, now his dreams were possible again. And, you know, the people who said, you know, you need to lower your expectations. He's never going to this. He's never going to that. He's never going to go to college. Well, guess what? Now never he's in college. That. Don't ever say that. You know, and, and, and he's thriving. And he's got friends. And he's happy. Right? And that's the most important thing. They're happy, they have dreams, they have goals, and they're able to achieve them. So that's what we all want for our kids, right? Sometimes kids just, they need more than what the normal, you know, 
societal structures have for them um, when things are off track. And so we just, we, we invite families, anybody who has a kid that's struggling, um, you want more? Sure. Um, they, they want more for, you know, themselves. Um, come, come visit us, come tour our center, see what we do and how we do it, learn more, um, because we, we want to help more kids. And you were saying that you have a lunch and learn in this yes. October 10th, am yes. I correct? Yep, right here, that's a Wednesday. So um, come have a delicious lunch, tour the center, meet the staff, hear from some families um, who have been through program and um, see if it's a good fit for your family. <laughs> yep. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, restoring dreams and the hopes <laughs> of children and parents in Michigan, we have Larry Hockman and Carrie Ogerina from Brain Balance. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Do you love local sports? Whether it's Oxford High School or Parks and Rec, you can buy copies of each game. To purchase your copy, call us at 248-628-9658 or give us an email at manager at occtv.org or talk to us at the next game. Hopefully we'll see you there. Rachel Baker, thanks Rachel. For the last segment of today's show, we visited Oxford High School for the U of M Recruitment Day. Admissions counselor Kelsey Bellinger had a lot of important information on freshman classes. Students can enroll in their first year. Here are some of that footage. Again, different than some schools where you're applying just to the university itself and applying in there, you're applying directly into a school or college on your application. So there's 14 undergraduate programs in total. Um, however, of those 14, seven of them are available for freshmen to apply into. Um, so I definitely want to talk about those seven. The other seven are going to be considered upper level programs. And I've heard a few of you guys that are going to be interested in those too, so I definitely want to touch on those as well. Um, but for those seven freshmen and mini units, the first one is the largest college on campus. It's the College of Literature, Science, and the Arts. Um, it houses about 90 majors within it. Um, so for those of you guys that are interested in well, there are a lot of things that really fall in this category. So biology, psychology, pre-med, pre-law. Um, what are some other things that I heard in there? Really, it ranges from like biology down to philosophy and really anything in between, because there's about 90 majors in total. A lot of foreign language courses taught through that. Really, the College of Literature, Science, and the Arts is going to be kind of a liberal arts education focusing on language, focusing on humanities, social sciences, just kind of diving into a lot of different areas of study to prepare you for a wide range of different jobs after graduation. Um, for those of you guys interested in pre-med, quite a few of you guys, even pre-law too, even though we don't have specific undergraduate majors for those, we have what we call pre-professional study programs. And those fall within the College of Literature, Science, and the Arts. And what that is is that you'll have access to advisors, some prerequisite courses throughout your undergraduate career that would progress you toward going to medical school or to law school. So LSA is a good route for you guys if you're interested in those areas. Um, and then of those of you guys that are undecided still, totally fine. I was undecided as a freshman in college. I spent my whole entire first year undecided. Um, so that's okay too. Literature, science, and the arts is also a good option for you. You don't actually declare a major until after sophomore year. So you have a little bit of time to explore and just take some courses, figure out what it is that you actually want to do. And undecided is actually the most popular track that students will take. So that's okay to be in that point. Um, but that's the largest of those uh, seven. The second one is the College of Engineering, second largest college on campus. Um, similar to LSA, you don't apply directly into a specific concentration within engineering your freshman year. You start with some basic math and science courses, take some exploratory engineering courses to figure out which concentration you're actually going to be interested in, and then you choose that your sophomore year. Um, so there's 17 really concentrations in total. I've heard a few of them, aerospace, biomedical, chemical engineering are examples of, of those 17. That was just about two minutes from the introduction and application process to U of M. If you're interested in learning more about the course offering, visit their official site at admissions.umich.edu. That's all we have for Schooling Around this week. Stay tuned for upcoming shows with myself and Rachel Baker. 